Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time that I have not recorded any video, but I decided to come back to the channel with a review of my book that I published on January 17, 2024. Yeah, so it's a lot around maybe a couple of months ago as of publishing this video, but maybe if you watch this later, it would be even further behind. But uh, let's get into it. So this is the book that I published, Flutter Engineering Book, and you can check out the website flutterengineering.io and simply go through the table of content. First of all, I am very, very appreciative because I had so many good and expert friends from the community who have stepped in and reviewed and even contributed to the content of this book. So thank you very much. And thanks to all of them, in fact, to make this book even better. If you go to the table of content, you will read all the titles of the chapters and each part of of the book, which I'm going to go through it quickly through the PDF. So you can take a look at this uh, website. This video is about reviewing the digital edition of the book. As you can see, I have both paper copy as well as the digital copy. The digital copy is actually being sold on my website, but the paper copy at the moment is on different vendors such as Amazon. So the paper copy also has two different editions. So you may find one of them, which is is the hardcover. In fact, this one is the hardcover. And I strongly recommend you to buy this one. The quality of this is fantastic. There's also a soft cover, which uh, is a little bit cheaper, but then I myself actually prefer the hardcover. But anyway, let's get into the details of this book right now. So as you can see, the table of content comes with five parts and 26 chapters. Just want to quickly walk you through what is going Going on right now in this book. This is a table of contents pretty much similar to what you see on the website. And let's just move uh, quickly to the chapter, the part one. In part one, you're going to go and read about Flutter engineering or like Flutter itself from engine, from framework and everything related to software engineering in the context of Flutter. So you're going to learn a lot of things here. So some of them are my opinion, for example, Flutter engineering pillars. This is actually my opinion, I think Flutter comes with four pillars, trades off, scale, UX and time. This is what I think uh, based on my experience. There's a lot of content here that you can explore quickly. Many, many handwritten diagrams. In fact, these diagrams, I hand written them and then with some tools, I made them a bit nicer. So then in chapter two, I strongly believe all Flutter developers must read this chapter. This is a must read chapters like you will learn a lot about the architecture and engineering inside the Flutter itself. We'll go through a lot of things here, like different uh, trees, of course. We go through like the life cycle of those trees. We go through the render pipelines and many, many, many more things in this chapter. In fact, this chapter is like the longest chapter in the book. Then we're going to talk about some uh, native platform, you know, integration in Flutter, platform channels and other options. You can even find find the newest option for native integration in Flutter as well, like FFI or GenAI. These are the things that you can learn as well. And then we go through the fundamentals of software engineering in the context of Flutter. We go through object-oriented programming and we explore a lot of things here. There are many source codes that you will see here that I actually referenced it from Engine itself or from the framework itself. You can actually go to the source code and take a look at like the entire implementation. So this is nice that you will learn. So then chapter five, we go through the design patterns. I found a bunch of design patterns that is uh, very often you see both in the frameworks as well as well as in the applications that you are building. So I quickly went through them with some examples and diagrams, as you can see, so to make it easier for you to understand the patterns and how you can apply them to your application. In the part two of the, so this is by far like around 200 pages, like half of the pages about Flutter engineering it's Itself and software engineering like concepts in the context of Flutter. And then we go through the architecture, like the foundation of architecture, like different uh, topics, different subjects, so that an architect probably should know, or you as a software engineer also need to know about these kind of things. And so, yeah, exploring all the foundation, that then moving to the two important chapters. First one is the architecture styles, where we go through like the layer architecture, event-driven, microkernel, and 
those and you see how you can actually leverage these styles in Flutter applications as well. And then we move on UI architecture patterns, which these are the two distinguished uh, categories that I made it. Some you may agree, some may not, but I, I found it like some of these are like a UI, very UI relevant, you know, patterns that you can apply to your application. Like three layers is perhaps one of those that you will see in this, you know, uh, book. And then you, we go through the block here as well. We go through like the patterns such as MV patterns, particularly MVP and a couple of others. We explore a couple of like patterns that is not really Flutter related, but is also well known in other, you know, communities such as Swift or like Android communities. And then I explored the clean architecture in this case. So we go through the clean architecture, very detailed and also step by step that you understand how you can leverage uh, clean architecture in your application. Each of these actually patterns comes with some pros, cons and like uh, trades off. So you learn like when to use which of these application, which, has the, which of these uh, patterns into your application. And then in chapter nine, we're going to go through the concurrency and parallelism. So talking a lot about isolate and different ways of writing asynchronous code, as well as using parallelism in uh, Dart. And then the offline capability, it's a chapter that it comes with some patterns that you will learn how you apply it to your Flutter application and quick overview of a state management. It's not about just which a state management is the best. It's about how you can uh, define an estate management that works for you. So perhaps again, very opinionated. This is my, you know, experience and my opinion on this chapter. And chapter 12, we go through the dependency injection. We talk about dependency injection, what it is in general and how you can leverage this concept in software engineering in Flutter applications. Then the part three of the book will start, which is mostly about the processes. In fact, you will learn about rules, styling, uh, style guides and how you can write leans and, you know, custom leans, and also how you can go through the collaboration in development, like, uh, you know, different type of version control and different type of, or things such as the code review, effective code review guidelines and things like that. And then go through the chapter 15, which is about documentation, which I think it's very important. Like it's in software engineering, documentation is one of the most important things that everyone should know from writing to deciding how to write until like how to maintain those documentation. So this is a pretty long chapter and I'm really proud of uh, this chapter because you learn a lot about documentation if you have not done that uh, before. We're going to go through the testing in Flutter. So come on, some of the even uh, new testing Flutter related stuff such as the golden test and things uh, that is uh, recently added to the test framework for Flutter is also added here. We talked also a lot about test doubles, which is very important to understand them. Like if I go through like the test doubles, you, you're going to learn about the stops, mocs, fakes, and spies and dummies. And I have charts that to display what they are. And like, you can take a look at this here and then even how you can use them. So then we're going to go through the environments and flavors in Flutter, go through quickly these concepts in software engineering in general, as well as the Flutter applications development. The part four of the book is about ethical engineering. That's what I call it. So technically going through the security and also reviewing the cryptography in Flutter and Dart in general, how you can use them, where to use them, for what reason. Lots of diagrams here also to just tell you like, you know, the concept better. And then talking about user privacy and also accessibility, which I think is very important topic. You learn a lot about like different accessibility features in Flutter as well, as well as the general accessibility is like a standard, which also Flutter try to implement them in the app, into the framework. Then we go through the last part of the book, which is advancing the UI development, talking about adaptive UIs, some patterns and some styles that you can use, and also responsive techniques that you may need to use. We all know that Flutter is a multi-platform application. It's very nice that you think about like, you know, uh, responsiveness uh, from the beginning. And then we go through the chapter uh, 24, a lot about internationalization and localization. So I dig into the ARB files and also brought up lots of new contexts for this, which you may have not heard about them before. You may even have heard about them, but lots of tips and tricks in this chapter about localization. Then 
then we move on to the theming. It's a pretty long chapter, very well reviewed as well. And it's about a new way that you can utilize theming in Flutter. And you will learn a lot about deep dive into actually the theming in Flutter. And the last uh, chapter is about custom painters and shaders, which technically is going to be uh, talking about custom painters, as it says. And we all go down to even learn about shaders and even like the fundamental of the shader language, for example. And once you learned all of those in this, even try to get one of those shaders in the shader toys and convert them in a way that you can use them in Flutter. So this is all about shaders in this chapter. And that's about it. So it's just about 550 pages, as you can see. It's a pretty thick book <laughs> if you buy it in paper, but you can also buy it in digital. Feel free to check out the website flutterengineering.io. And also, let me quickly explain the packages on the website. I have now two packages. The Essential package, which is $39, and it's just giving you actually all main book in a digital format. And then I have a mastery package, which is $99, which is now including the main book. Plus, I have written another book, Flutter Above and Beyond. You will learn about uh, that here in the, the part of the website, which I'm talking about, like a table of contents. It will be released very soon. So my next video probably is going to be about my next book. Please stay tuned. And also, I have a couple of hours video supporting the content of the video, which you can get all in one package mastery, I called it. So that's pretty much it. I hope that you like the book. Please go ahead. Let me know if you've got the book, you read the book and you liked it. And let me know what kind of topic is missing in the table of content and you want me to cover, because that's my goal for this channel, as well as the website, flutterengineering.io. So I'm going to write about it. I'm going to publish and hopefully we're going to cover very advanced content about. Cheers.